So let's start by creating a new Xcode project. Let's see, let's select Xcode and then new project. And then I am going to make it a single view application, first of all, and I'm going to name this Axel. Yeah, that's a nice name. Next, and I'm going to save it on my desktop. And as you probably know, know by now, we are going to take a look at the accelerometer. And this is a very useful feature. As I said, if you want to make um, apps for sports or just have any other reason for measuring the acceleration, so then an accelerometer is very useful. So let's start by importing core motion. And that's the first thing that we need to do in order to be able to work with our accelerometer and access that type of data. Then we are going to create a motion manager, which I'm simply going to create by saying var motion manager, which is of type CM motion manager. And then I am going to create a, another function. Let's see if it has any problems. It's probably because we haven't defined the motion manager yet. So we are going to do, well, no error anymore. Awesome. So now we are going to use the view did appear I always like to use that one, or sometimes I do, but uh, now it's a good idea because we're really not interested in measuring the acceleration before the app has actually appeared and is functional and is operational. And we start by saying motion manager dot accelerometer update interval. And here you can define how often you want to update the accelerometer data. Now, if you don't do this, it will update constantly. And I really mean constantly, it's just going to pour out with data. Now, I really don't need all of that data. So I'm going to say, I'm going to be sufficient with it updating every 0.2 seconds. And then we also wanted to start tracking the motion. And the way we do that is simple by saying motion manager, let's see motion manager, dot star accelerometer updates and then here we will have a completion handler and here we are simply saying defining the operation queue and we're just going to access the current one and then here we are going to get two things each time the accelerometer updates we're going to get two variables we're either going to get some data or an error so i'm just going to name the first one data and the second one error simple as that and then down here i'm first of all going to try to cast our data to a variable named for example my data and that is just to check that i can access the data or first of all that there is some data there and then second of all if i'm able to access it and cast it to a variable so i'm going to say if let my data is equal to data so i'm taking my current data and pushing it into this let constant right here. And it looks like we have a slight problem. Yeah, I don't need those. It's not a function, just an exclamation mark. That will do. Uh, and then I am going to say if my data, data dot, or first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to show you what the data looks like. So I'm just going to say print my data and it would be a good idea to get your phone out here uh, because I'm not sure if you can test this on the Mac. So I'm going to connect my phone and then I'm going to start shaking it around so that you can see how the output data looks like. So as you can see here, I constantly get new data, both X and Y and Z. And it's lots of data as you can see. So it's a good idea to restrain it to the interval that you wanted to update at, else it will just pour out. But I will also say that it's pouring out now. But as you can see, the changes aren't very great because my device is currently laying still. So as you can see, it's 0, 0.00 because I'm really not doing anything. But now I'm going to pick up my phone and I'm going to drag it to the side, one, two, three. As you can see, there we, let's see, I'm going to shake it around. There we go, four, seven, three, two. We get some more data here. I'm going to shake it the other way. So as you can see, we get lots of different data here. Now, what I want to do is I want to try to use this data in order to do something. 
If we scroll up a bit, as you can see, as I shook it around, we got a change in the x coordinates of three point, or it's really not coordinates, but the acceleration in the x direction. And right here, we got 3.9, and here I pulled it back, so it's minus 2.1. So we can expect, if I shake it around, that we get around a response of around 5 to 3, 3 to 5, even 7 here, and minus 3. So here I was just shaking it back and forth. And as you can see, that displayed in the X coordinates. And what I want to do is I want to register a certain change. So I want to say, if, um, let's see, motion manager, or I mean data, my data, my data dot acceleration at x is equal to, let's say five. So what I'm doing now is I'm checking if there has been a certain change. So instead of just reacting to each and every update, I'm checking if the motion is significant, which means it's five, for example, then I'm going to do something. And this is something that you will most often do also when you're making app. For example, right now I'm using a, a exercise app um, that measures how many pull-ups you, you take. And uh, that uses probably an accelerometer in order to check when I go back up. So it checks for acceleration and then counts that as a pull-up. And it also does that with setups and that kind of stuff. So the creators of that app have found out that when X is or I or a set is at around a certain range, then they can register it as a pull up or a setup or anything really. So what we're going to do is we're going to, we have experimented a little bit here and then we have found out that five is a great enough change for us to register and take a certain action on it. So we are just going to say print do something special. And now I'm going to launch it and it won't print my data unless I actually do the shaking. So let's see if that is working as we want it to. Before I launch it, there is one thing. I am not going to check if it's exactly equal to five because that won't probably happen that often. I'm going to say it's greater than five. That way it will launch when the number is greater than five instead of being exactly five. So my app is now running on my phone and as you can see it's lying still, no output, but then I pick it up and then I shake it around like a crazy maniac and there we go, do something special. So there we go, it requires a bit of a force here, I'm shaking it, there we go. So it's really about finding that sweet spot for when you want to react to something and this is just one way of using the accelerometer. Uh, you could make a game, for example, where, you, where when the user shakes the device, you want to throw a snowball or something, then this is a great way of doing that. And hopefully you did enjoy this video on using the accelerometer. Hopefully you will have a lot of fun with it and experiment with not only X, but also Y and Z. And then I wish you the best of luck with that. And also thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure that you click the subscribe button. And if you do so, I will see you back in the next video.